Hi, welcome to another video of I Wouldn't Do That If I Were You. So this is my 4000 Tower 060 Quick Pack that currently has a Zulu SCSI and it is rocking 314 ROMs and OS 3.1.4.1. I'm going to do the old long upgrade, well the faster upgrade to, uh, oops, if I turn it on, to uh, 3.2, then 3.2.1, then 3.2.2, then 3.2.2.1. Something like that. I'm the owner of the CD, as you can tell, and it has a key that is on your cellophane that is now here. And I'm digitally registered on Hyperion site, so you can just download the update LHAs from them. Cool installation guide. Good job, guys. I'd like to get some new CDs. That'd be great. So what I'm going to do is forget that I just booted off the hard drive. My desk is a little messy at the moment. But, this is my 314, there's the CD, it just mounted, do I need to boot from install? On a plus note, I Amazon myself a proper key puller instead of using a screwdriver. And I also got, while I'm waiting on that thing to boot, four uh, TZ tapes, or M tapes, or what are these? I don't know, for my label maker. Alright, that looks like crap. Install 3.2. Activate CD-ROM. Is it going to work? Is it second.scuzzy.device? Let's see. Does it find it? Probably not. No, because it is. So we got to go into what? Uh, storage. DOS driver. CD0. We're going to I. Uh, activate 5, huh? Activate equals 5. Second. So I got to go here, second dot SCSI dot device unit zero because the 4000 tower is IDE please don't be right protected, thank you mount that, how does it have a checksum error when it's a freaking ADF this is not going well, I'm having a good time today I shouldn't be doing this, but this is a Zulu SCSI, so the benefit of a Zulu SCSI is if you blow it up, it's just an HDA file that I already have backed up in a folder on this card that's behind here or here, and I can just pull this faceplate off and, and recover, which is what I'll probably have to do. I do have a 3.9 installation on this Zulu SCSI also in a separate folder called 3.9. But for this, I'm just booting off the GoTech, as you can see by that blinking light right there. And uh, we're going to try this again. I'm not going to worry about the DOS driver that's on the disk, because I forgot what mine is. It's either SCSI.DeviceUnit0 or second SCSI.DeviceUnit0. So we'll just blast through this, because it looks just freaking wonderful. Second.SCSI.DeviceUnit... Oh, whoops, it's Unit 2. Oh, it just locked up on me now, huh? You're being a real... I haven't even started yet, and I've already had four problems. Number one, my GoTech got a checksum error on a digital disk. I forgot the name of my second.scuzzy.deviceunit2, which apparently is the slave of the IDE port, which is up here on the tower, because the SCSI 2 is way back here. The CD-ROM of 3.2 is in the drive, but I can't get the drive to come online. And is it going to break all my custom 3.9 Amadoc? Probably. All right, let's go into this one. Or to make an eye. Why is this so tiny? That's what she said. <laughs> Activate one two nd dot unit two. There we go. All right. Install three point two. That's great. Intermediate because I need to choose my modules disk because I have a three point one point four ROM. I'm going to zoom in here. There we go, had to turn studio lights on. So I'm going to choose intermediate. If you have a regular ROM, you can choose novice if you're just lazy and don't feel like unchecking the printers. 3.2 is gonna replace your startup sequence. Huh. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna go D80. S. I got a lot of crap in here, so I'm gonna take my startup sequence. La 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 la. Yeah, this one and user startup. And I'm going to copy them to RAM. I'm going to stick them on DH1. And I'm going to stick them on installs. And just stash them here. And I'm going to say yes. English, like Jesus spoke. No printers. And then it will install printers anyway. 
the only language we need is the one that I speak. We're going to move this crap, and we're going to move your CD-ROM driver. Whatever. Yeah, go ahead. I got to back up. Let's let it delete automatically. So this should automatically pull the disks it needs from from the CD-ROM. You'll see flickering orange. It's always green unless it's reading. Just means it's got power. And because it's so fast on the floppy drive, once it hits the locale disk, it'll uh, say, hey, all right, copy has greatly increased from the floppy. It's actually rolling right along. This is the mouse that came with my tower. I call it the big toe, but it actually has the same Amiga Technologies branding on that mouse as the back sticker. If you're wondering why I look like I'm almost dead, it's because I feel like it. I've had about four hours of sleep in two days. This is probably going to blow up everything I had. We are a 4000 tower. This is why the modules disk and intermediate is so important. I like it because it does list the CD32 as a viable install. Your system's running, you need the MMU libs, fine. So I'm going to run this again. Other. Alright, done. Remove your disks and press proceed. This is 314 to 32, and I have an invalid object link. Make link failed. Great, that's just wonderful. That's great. If exists, make link RAM to NVARC force. Okay, so I'm booting this again. Alright, so proceed. Install 32. Intermediate. Take this little compact flash folder and this HD0 that's borked. We delete it. And we take this 314 and paste it. Now, if I want a 39, I just take this HD0 and put it here on the root. There you go. I am back to square one, but I am going to make a copy of that real quick. A few seconds to make myself a backup of my backup for when I bork this again. I don't know why it decided to not do its thing. There we go. Let's pop this zip disk out here. I do have a zip boot restore I could have used because, you know, that would have been smart. But the Zulu way is a little faster. Now that CD-ROM's still in there. I'm basically where I was before I started this entire video because remember what I told you in the beginning. But I'm going to do the same thing because I'm dumb. Alright, proceed. Install. Holy crap. So I rebooted and it said invalid object lock and then I got mad and said F this video. But what happens is 3.2 has that soft ROM module and when I rebooted it, it was on a, a, a re-kick map ROM in this accelerator, which was the 314 ROM, so I had to fully power it off, and then I powered it back on, it map ROMed the 4000T modules ROM, and now I got the right mofo. Cool. The soft kick says 3.2 ROM. Okay, so we're, we're okay there. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to slap in that GoTech again. And we're going to do the, the new ones. Shut up! Who's the interrupter today? Hi, Kevin. Hold on, I'm the wrong, I'm on the wrong version. This will be 3.2 to 3.2.1, and then I have to do 3.2 to 3.2.2. It is going to ask me for my modules disk because it's at that point, and it has pre-selected 4,000 tower, and you'll notice on this one, the 3,000 is still missing, guys. Hyperion, you forgot a machine. You have room here. 3000 desktop is missing. Tower's there. There's your disk. All right. All right, so we're done. Click proceed. Now let's see. Because I'm re-kicked, does it give me that same error? Or will it work? Unless I power off and it has the new ROM. We're going to check that. It's still map rom 3, 2, 1, I saw it. Let's check. And I have no mouse. Damn it. And my hard drive solid as a rock. I'm going to power down because she gets mad at me. Power back on. 
she's pretty, but she's not the nicest girl on the tree. I have had these Mauser parts for freaking ever. What is this Mauser part? Well, they're the special weird pin header dude audio RGB cord pin things is what I wrote. It takes a special 90 degree weird double-sided solder tipped pin header that goes on the side. It's, it's, they're interesting. So I bought two of them because they only come in 68 pins and I have to install uh, 50 pins times two because the modules have been removed and added so many times. It's a pin header so it's loosened up. So there we go. I have a mouse. It requires a power off. So we're three, two, one. Now let's just continue this disaster. We're going three, two, two. Whatever. And then I'm going to copy this entire OS to another folder on this card and we will be good to go. Remove the disc. Great. Now I know I have to turn this off because she's picky as a daggone three dollar bill. We're going to turn it back on and I'm going to pre-prep my 3221 Modfix Update ADFs. This program updates your hard drive installation of the Amiga OS Opera, Amiga Operating System 322 to 3.2.2.1. Boy! We're going to say intermediate anyway. Proceed. That's it. Remove the disk and reboot your Amiga. Remove the disk. It said it was rebooting, so I'm just going to let it do its thing. We're going to see if I have a mouse. You know it's picky. You know I won't. I guarantee you this. There is a new hard drive fast file system because I'm not using PFS3, I'm using fast file system. So, fast file system 4620. So I know it's going to be a newer version, so we're going to update that, blow it up, and then I'll have to do all this over again. But it's a Zulu, so I can just copy that card that I made a backup of. Yay, technology. So as you can see here, 3.2.2.1 and I have a boatload of memory because this machine is flipping awesome when she wants to be. What's the ROM say? So here's your new info. 3.2 ROM is always going to be there. That's that's that. And then here's your new release is 47.10. Now the new ROM, you actually burn one, it'll say 47.101 I guess. Um, yeah. So now I'm going to run uh, sys tools HD toolbox. Now the Amiga 4000 has IDE and SCSI, so we have a SCSI dot device, which is IDE, and a second SCSI dot device. Okay, so it doesn't know what that is because that's a CD-ROM, which is still in the damn drive, which didn't mount. My CD-ROM didn't mount. Well, that's just great. Okay, so with my CD-ROM fixed, what I'm going to do now is something you guys should do every once in a while, and that's update your your fast file system on your drives. Because it gets written to RDB. So we're going to run SysTools HD Toolbox. And since this is a Zulu SCSI, it's going to have a couple options. I'm going to go ahead and insert a zip cartridge. And I'm going to format this real quick, Amiga. Great, done. Inject that to get all the icons off my desk and just put it back in so we have an Amiga zip disk before I run HD Toolbox because I need it to sniff both buses. There's my zip. Great. Put something on there. Execute. SCSI device 0, unit 2. And then second SCSI device is my my stuff. So zero, zero, unknown. We're not touching these. That's master and slave, okay? So I want SCSI that device, UAE, HD0 to HDA. The second one is the Zulu. Remember, I first made this in WinUAE. So I'm partition drive. I'm going to say advanced options. 30 buffers. Well, we're going to bump that to 300. And I could say save, but it doesn't matter. Partition drive. Okay, so 300 buffers. We're going to add or add update the file system. 
right? We're going to say update file system, L colon fast file system. Now our current version is 46.13. That's the original 314 file system. Update L, you'll see 47.4. All right, we're done. It does the max transfer. This is identifier. It does max transfer and stuff automatically for you. So you can say OK and then save changes to disk. It might yell, but it won't do it. We're going to do the same thing for the second drive. And we're going to say 300 buffers, direct SCSI transfer, update the file system. Oh, we have a bunch of them, 4620 and 45.9. So we're going to update the file system to L47.4, there we go, international fast file system, OK, OK, and save. It'll destroy DH1. No it won't. Exit. Continue. So I just ejected the zip disk to let it reboot and we're going to see if it destroyed DH1. It doesn't matter if it did because I have a copy of it, but it shouldn't. Nope, DH1's still there, so thank you, great. Now i got to clean up these icons because it made a mess of everything. My Amadoc didn't launch because I don't think it's in Workbench Startup. So as you can see, we are complete back in action. Didn't screw up too much. Uh, this is now on Amiga OS 3.2.2.1. We are rocking a 314 ROM. It is doing map ROM, and it works well. Took a while, took a couple interesting turns. If you're having that problem where it gives you an error message, turn off and turn on the device. Don't let it reboot warm, because it map ROM the old ROM if you're doing an upgrade. And now we're on the latest one from Hyperion Entertainment, and all seems well. But that took me about two, two to two and a half hours. Thanks to editing, McDonald's Chicken Nuggets, and the power of Grayskull, for you it was only a few minutes. But I have to go through the headaches to explain any issues that you may have so you don't have to deal with them. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey. Until next time, this has been Dr. Chris and the 4000 Tower. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.